This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at one of the most important Android phones of 2013. This is the HTC One. We're going to look at the US AT&T version. This review, though, no matter which version you get, you get, well, pretty much the same thing. Just some software customizations by the carrier. That's about it. And we're going to look at it now. The phone will be available April 19th in the U.S. on AT&T and, S and Sprint. T-Mobile says coming this spring. We don't know when yet. It's $199 for the 32 gig model, which is going to be available on all the carriers. Oh, we don't know T-Mobile's exact pricing yet since they're now the uncarrier and they don't do standard subsidized phone pricing. And there's a 64 gig model. That's exclusive to AT&T for carrier branded versions. That one will be $299 on contract. Now, HTC is also selling this direct and unlocked. There's a 32 gig version and that one's 575 and again, you can use it with, with, with every carrier you want. And they're selling a developer edition of the 64 gig, which is both SIM unlock, so you can use it with whatever carrier you want, and bootloader unlock, so you can go to town with custom ROMs if that's your thing. That one's 650 which is probably going to be the same price as the AT&T 64 gig model anyway. So if you're an AT&T customer and you're not due for a contract renewal, you might want to look at that one because it's a little bit more versatile. So this is HTC's top phone for 2013, and it indeed is one of the top phones on the market that you can get. It's just really lovely in all ways. And they've been struggling to combat Samsung, who obviously owns the lion's share of the Android phone market. And the way they're doing it is saying no, no, no to plastic designs and going with a really high quality metal design. So for those of you who say, well, I want my flagship phone to really look and feel like a quality piece, much like the iPhone 5 does, here it is, this certainly does. 4.7 inch super LCD 3 display, full 1080p resolution, that's 468 ppi pixel density. Honestly, once you get in the 400s, you know, it, unless you're the rare species of hawk that can spot anything, you can't see the difference anymore. So they're all good in the 400s, but this happens to be one of the highest pixel densities on the market currently. Beautiful aluminum all around here. Both of these are speakers, HTC Boom Sound, they call that. You know, they, they're going for some branding here as they try to differentiate themselves a little bit more. Has Beats Audio, has stereo speakers. We'll talk about that more later. It's good stuff. Look around the phone, more lovely aluminum. This will be available in the silver with white and also a black edition. And here, this sticker here kind of, you know, doesn't look so pretty, don't worry. You can peel that off. There's just no place for them to put the IMEI and other inf useful information on the phone directly when they sell it to you. We have our ultra pixel camera here, four megapixels, but big sensor. We'll talk about that too. Our LED flash is right there. Really gorgeous looking phone. Just feels nice in the hand. There's a curve to the back, so it fits in your hand nicely, not too angular. And on the sides here, basically this is a, a aluminum alloy unibody construction and they injection mold some plastic into it for improved ten antenna reception. Well, because they have to put the button somewhere, don't they? But here's our volume controls. Interesting, kind of spun aluminum look on it. Actually, they work pretty well, pretty easy, even though they look fairly subtle. Up top here, we have our power button that doubles as the IR window for the consumer IR remote to control your AV gear. Headphone jack up there. Contrasting white with the silver, it looks pretty nice. Up here, I know some people are really paying an excruciating amount of detail to build quality, particularly customers more than reviewers. And there's a teeny weeny bit of a little bit of gap here where the white meets the silver, but honestly, there's nothing that I would worry about. I know some people are obsessing on it. To me, it looks like a pretty good tight fit all in all. And on this end here, we have our micro USB port. And on the front here, we have a 2.1 megapixel camera and LED for notifications. Red and green are your colors. You don't get all the colors that you do with the Samsung phone, but you can actually set up notifications, LED notifications, that is, for several different kinds of things. And it, we're talking a matter of minutes, not all day long like you would with the BlackBerry Z10. For those of you who like to have that LED blink for hours if it needs to, just to let you know you missed something going on. And we have an ambient light sensor there, too. Inside, the phone is just as impressive. 1.7 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 quad-core CPU, very fast on the highest benchmarks we've ever seen from this guy. Two gigs of RAM inside, and as I said, either 32 or 64 gigs of internal storage. No micro SD card slot here anywhere, folks. Sorry, the only thing that you got in the way of a door is right here, and that's for your micro SIM right over there. Likewise, the battery is sealed inside. 2300 milliamps, that's a pretty decent capacity for a smartphone. We worried about battery life on a phone that's, well, this fast, and actually it's been quite good. 
The phone has Wi-Fi, 811BGN, and Wi-Fi A and AC. That's pretty darn unusual. It's dual band, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC as well on this, and a GPS with GLONASS. So really, you got the recipe for all good high-end stuff here. So how about the software? Here we have our standard Android home screen, right? It doesn't look too exceptional there. First, notice on the front we actually have capacitive buttons down here, so you're not losing any of your screen real estate to virtual buttons. But also notice that there's two buttons here, not the usual Android 3. Now, I know Google would like to do away with the menu button, but gee, it's kind of weird not having it. And the HTC logo is just a logo. I kept tapping that, expecting it to be home, just out of habit, because usually the center button is the home button on Android phone. But here we have home and we have back, and that's all that we have. And we press and hold on the home button to get to our Google Now. And compared to the long press on the home button to bring up Google Now, if we do it double tap just right, we bring up the multitasking functionality there. Notice where it goes by default for the home screen. This is HTC Blink. Think of this sort of like Pulse. It's a very visual news reader for various news sources, all kinds, not just technology here. And you get a pretty good selection. You can customize what you see here, but you can't add your own sources, which has been a sore point, I think, for a lot of people. And you also get the clock and the weather there because, you know, HTC loves to give us the clock and the weather. If we tap on that, we get world times on the clock section right there. And if we tap on the weather, we get weather news. We're running Jelly Bean Android 4.1.2, relatively recent build, not the very latest available for Nexus phones, but still, we're talking minor point differences here, not complaining, and HTC Sense 5. HTC has really toned down Sense a lot, and they've made it a little bit more of a modern, clean, flat UI. I like it a lot. Now, I've always enjoyed Sense in general, to be honest, a little bit more than TouchWiz often, and this is nice and understated. We have our little launcher strip here for quick launch icons, and you can customize which icons are down here, and pressing here will bring up your application drawer. Unlike most Android phones, it's not side-to-side -side swipe, it's up and down scrolling. Now, by default, HCC ships this with several icon groups put together in folders for you. Now, some people say, well, gosh, it's an extra tap to get to things. You can move these around as ever you see fit. If there's something in here you use all the time, like Chrome, you can drag it out of the little Google folder right here and put it at the root level if you want. You can put it right on the home screen, too. So. That brings us right back again, and we've got media right here. And there's a lot of software on here. We've, we have all the standard Google applications, the YouTube, Google Play Movies, Google Play Music, HTC's own music player, which has a similar icon to Google Play Music, just with red, beats red, headband there. AT&T's Live TV is on here, since this is the AT&T version. Kindle is preloaded. We have HTC Watch on here. We have Google Play Books, SoundHound, which HTC likes to put on their phones. In the AT&T group right here, you can see all sorts of AT&T apps. And you can hide applications if you want, but so far I haven't found that any of these are removable. And there we have many of our Google apps put together to make them easy to find for you. Otherwise, it's fairly clean. We have Facebook pre-installed. We have Twitter pre-installed on here. I put a couple of games on and some other tools. You've got a voice recorder on here. So you can see, download the usual Google weather and news. We've got stock application, calculator. And for productivity, we have tasks, and we have notes, and notes can sync to Evernote. You can customize the home screen. It starts out with one home screen right here and the Blink Feed page. You can add as you see fit. So let's take a look at settings right here. Usual, usual HTC settings with the little bouncy that tells you when you reach the end of the line there. So we have all our wireless radios settings right here. Backup content transfer beats audio, which by default is on and now works for the speakers too, not just headphones. And under personalize, you can see we can change our wallpaper, the lock screen, customize the home screen. You can also do a long press to do this. If I hit add panel, I can add another panel. So you're not limited to just the screens it starts you with. And there's a whole lot of widgets here. AT&T Navigator, AT&T Smart Wi-Fi, bunch of calculators, a couple of calendar views, bookmarks, some of those are the usual Google things right there. Facebook stuff, Gmail, Google Play, Google Now, Google Recommends, Music Playback Widget, and wireless radio controls. I find those particularly handy to put on the home screen because unlike Samsung phones, you, you don't, or even just vanilla Android Jelly Bean phones, you don't swipe down and get quick access to your wireless radios and your screen brightness, so it's nice to have those 
without having to go through the whole settings march right there. So there's various wire, individual wireless radio controls or a dashboard for several of them put together. And then we have a power dashboard as well. And then a couple of clocks because we know that HTC still, HTC still loves their clocks and their weather widgets. And in fact, for those of you who are feeling nostalgic, there's the traditional old-fashioned HTC flip clock with the weather built in. So lots to choose from there. And this is a pop-down, so you can actually choose between apps and shortcuts. So if you want to change the shortcuts that are at the bottom, there's your selection of shortcuts that are on the bottom. So pretty easy stuff. HTC makes it fairly user-friendly. Just like the overseas version, it comes in a nice looking box. Usually we won't come in that too much, but you know, AT&T particularly loves their little ugly orange and white boxes that make every phone look a little cheesy for the out of the box experience. You get the nice box here. Cool. Skinny box for a skinny phone. Inside, printed guide, that's where the phone sits. And then inside here we have our SIM removal tool, our standard HTC charger, which looks like pretty much every other HTC charger that you've seen lately. USB cable included as well. And there's your little world charger. And we get some nifty headphones. These are the spaghetti wire style headphones that are pretty trendy right now, and they sound pretty good too. Often when phones come bundled with a, a headset, it, it's pretty depressing stuff, but this is actually not bad. And now let's compare it to the iPhone 5. It's little buddy with the metal construction and diversity antenna designed for, well, good reception, despite the fact we're talking about a lot of aluminum in the casing here. Obviously the iPhone 5 is going to be smaller. It has a smaller four inch screen. And here from the back view, well, in a way, almost a similar kind of aesthetic, isn't it? A lot of brushed aluminum, white highlights. I would say that the HTC has a unique kind of design language, though. Very curved. They break up the, the monotony of the back with their white lines here. Curved where the iPhone is flat, for example. Definitely two of the top build quality phones on the market right now, and really good looking, high quality pieces. And here we have it next to the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 with a 5.5 inch display. You know who's going to be bigger. It's going to be the Samsung. You know who's going to be plastic here. It's going to be the Samsung. But there they are together to give you an idea of the size difference. Significant. And the back view. And here we have it next to the Sony Xperia Z 5 inch display on the Sony, also full HD 1080p. Certainly uh, an interesting comparison, particularly for those of you who are overseas because you have the Xperia Z on carriers. We don't yet in the U.S. We will get the ZL, which is slightly smaller as an unlock phone in the U.S. Anyway, both high quality phones. The Sony goes with glass front and back, so a different look and a more angular design. Just about the same size though, so that's interesting. Even though the HTC is a 4.7 inch display, it's cutting about the same footprint. Just a teeny bit smaller, hardly, than the Xperia Z. And on the back view, we have black plate of glass here, and we have, of course, the aluminum here. And in terms of thickness, well, they're both thin phones. And lastly, a particular interest to you photo buffs is the Nokia Lumia 920 versus the HTC right here. I, this has a 4.5 inch display to Lumia, so it's really not much smaller. Go figure. Of course, the Lumia is a bright, colorful phone available in several stunning shades versus the aluminum understated thing going on with the HTC. In terms of speed, the phone just feels chronically fast. It doesn't lag, it doesn't bog down, it handles many applications running at the same time. I played Real Racing 3 with it, minimized that, just switched around to other demanding applications, gone back and forth, and nothing slows this guy down. And on synthetic benchmarks so far, it is the fastest phone on the block. Now, when the Samsung Galaxy S4 comes out, also using the Snapdragon Qualcomm 600 CPU with Adreno 320 graphics, then it'll be interesting to see who's faster. My guess is they're going to end up benchmarking about the same and both feeling fast. But for synthetic benchmarks, Quadrant 12,252. That's more than twice as fast as most high-end Android phones on the market, and it's even faster than the very fast LG Optimus G. On Antutu, 24,589, insanely fast. That's really, really good. For GL Benchmark 2.7, using the Egypt 2.5 HD test, 
off screen we got 37 frames per second and 33 on screen. Now that's a very demanding new version of GL Benchmarks. Those are actually very good scores. Sun Spider 1155 and lastly Geekbench 2 2637 making one of the fastest phones ever on Geekbench. Reception on the phone has been good. Uh, no problem because of the aluminum casing whatsoever. HTC really did go with uh, some serious antenna design and diversity radio inside to control that. And you can see our data speed tests on AT&T's LTE network have been excellent. Now you get a different range because it depends on where I was. Some cell towers are quicker than others and also I was using a couple of diff different test servers on there, but you get the idea. And our average was generally in the upper 18s, 19s for download speeds and upload speeds. You can see where we're at right here, anywhere from about 6 megs all the way up to 17 or so. So very good data speeds on the phone. Call quality on the phone has been good, but not excellent. Not as clear, not as easy to understand as my Samsung Galaxy Note 2, for example, on the same network. Uh, a little bit more digitized sound. The, the act, active noise cancelling on the HTC sometimes results in slightly robotic sounding voice incoming and outgoing that can make it a little hard to understand. The on-screen dialer, large and easy to use, and whoever you called most recently is going to be up here, and then we can slide through favorites and history right up here to get to other stuff. Now when I said call quality wasn't superb, it's not abysmal either, so don't have a panic attack if you really like this phone. It's just not the sharpest phone that we've heard so far on AT&T. HTC, like Samsung and Sony, is now getting into the AV remote gear thing. And we've got, again, that IR port right up here, consumer IR remote control on here. And it's a content-oriented kind of thing. Definitely listed all the providers in our area, and it also supports some other services online like Crackle. Pretty cool. You tell it some of the shows that you like, and it tries to come up with things that are interesting. We have our Today view, our This Week view. My videos is just locally stored stuff. And any show that I mark as a favorite and I say I want to track will show up here so I can keep track of what shows are upcoming that I'm interested in, which is pretty nice too. And up here we have our shortcut to our AV remote control right here. And you can control your basic home theater, your, your TV, your AV receiver, your cable box. That all works pretty well. And if we go home, you'll see that little film symbol right there. I can just jump on and turn on my AV gear and control stuff right here from the taskbar without actually having to go into the app, which is pretty cool. The phone has both Chrome installed and the older WebKit web browser because that allows, in this case, not, not so much HTC, but AT&T to customize the browser a little bit. We'll talk about that. But you can see we've got Adobe Flash Player here. Now, I didn't put that on. It comes pre-installed, which is pretty darn awesome, and that works with the older WebKit browser, which is the default browser on the phone unless you choose to change it. So for those of you who love Flash, that's the bomb. And if we take a look at the web browser here, we'll go to landscape mode, you can see we have this little drawer here because every time you change a page, this is the little AT&T sharing strip. I really hate this thing, honestly. Guess what? You can disable it, though. So you don't have to put up with that if you don't want it. Anyway, once you start scrolling through a page, it does disappear again. So no, no problem with that. Here's our on-screen keyboard, typical stuff for HTC. You can press and hold to get your alternate numbers and your symbols and all that kind of thing. I always like their keyboards. It works pretty well. It's nice. It's big. It's roomy. And here we've loaded our web page, a mobile tech review. Nice, smooth, big enough screen that you can actually even read small text pretty easily without zooming. But, of course, you can zoom and you can see just how responsive and fast that is. Plays HTML5 video just fine, works well. We're going to focus on some higher quality video playback locally stored in a moment instead, though. And then we're going to check out Gallery, which has some neat animations going on. Notice right here, the cat is actually moving, for example. And once again, if we're in Event View, we get the same neat thing here, and things are categorized by events, and I'll show you a neat effect that HTC does. So here right now, we've got a little animated cat going on, a little presentation, and some stills to look at. And if we tap that, we'll see. And there are various effects. This one is called Eiffel for Eiffel Tower. You get French music and it's black and white. I don't think that's too suitable for my flower picture, so I'm going to change that to something else. So 
So kind of a neat little something extra the HTC adds in there. And HTC has a feature called Zoe, which basically shoots a three second video clip, many photo frames, and creates a little in the moment, sort of like Vine. Just an interesting little snippet feature. I know some people really love that. It's kind of neat. To me, I actually like what they do at the gallery a little bit better. I find it more exciting. Speaking of the camera, again, it's a four megapixel, but it's ultra pixel actually camera on the back. What that means is the pixels are actually larger on the sensor. For those of you who are photography buffs, you know that larger sensors let more light in and more color, so you actually get better low light shots. And you know what, even in daylight, compared to some of the higher megapixel cameras on the market, this has done a really nice job taking pictures. I, a little bit over sharpened maybe, but honestly some really nice color saturated photos right here. And if you want to shoot a Zoe, you can see we got the little blue button right there. We can shoot a Zoe and it's going to fill up the frames and make something out of it. Or we can just do a regular still shot or we can shoot a video. Shooting is very quick. And right now we're in Zoe mode so you can see how it's filling up the frame. That one probably won't be too exciting since I wasn't moving the camera around any. And we'll turn Zoe off. And you can see the modes here. We have HDR, we have night, we have various scene settings, switching between the cameras, a sweet panorama, self-timer, quality ISO, white balance. So full array of options here really takes lovely pictures. We have flash control up here, and you know what? This phone almost never fires the flash, even taking pictures in a really, really dark setting. I'm not talking, well, not so great lighting in your living room. I'm talking almost dark. It's just amazing what it can do. This one was taken in a fairly dark room. There's a little bit of sunlight coming through. Lots of sharpness, lots of detail, good color. You can really see the fur, the color of his eyes, the whiskers. It's, it's definitely nice stuff. And here's a video that was shot it at night with one incandescent 60 watt bulb far away. Again, no flash, no other lighting. It just really did an amazing job of bringing out the colors and everything. So I give this camera a big thumbs up. And daylight shots, also very nice. And here's a shot taken outside with a very white subject. I was testing to see how much it would white out. And it actually did a pretty good job there of catching some of the detail of those flowers against a dark fence. Lots of detail, lots of color. A nice natural kind of feel to the photo. Doesn't look digital and two-dimensional at all. Good stuff. Now we're going to test 1080p video playback. Of course, that will play natively without any kind of scaling on this display. And the thing to pay attention to isn't just a gorgeous display, but it's the speakers. It sounds so rich and full. It really puts my Galaxy Note 2 to shame and my Galaxy S3. The volume most of the way up. Sounds as good as a lot of Ultrabooks, to be honest. This face and tablets. And it looks great too. So definitely an awesome multimedia device. Okay, so we have a really fast phone here, reasonably large display, full 1080p, even on auto brightness. I like HTC because they don't go real dim with the auto brightness. It's actually pretty bright, so they're not really dimming it down. Battery life has been good on this. I have had no problem making it through the day compared to the HTC One X Plus with the NVIDIA CPU where you could just watch the battery bar go down while you were playing a, a demanding 3D game. This guy really just works well with moderate use throughout the day. And I mean playing some games, streaming some video, making phone calls, web browsing, email, all the things that you usually do with a full featured phone. So, so far it's been quite good. The back being aluminum and having a fast CPU inside, it does get warm, but it so far has not gotten burning hot. Speaking of performance, let's test out gaming and see how it does. And here we are in Ravensward, a really nice game, pretty demanding, and you can hear how good the audio sounds, and it certainly looks gorgeous too. The pillow is beautifully. Ah, awake at last. 
rest, I see. It's good to see you up and about. So that's Raven's Ford? This is the Guild Hall of the Champions of Tyreus. And I am Perdis. And now we're in Real Racing 3. See how that plays? Hint, it will do well. Reflections in the rear of your mirror, yes. Great frame rates, you bet. Sharp display. Very smooth frame rates. And you'll get real-time damage effect here, I know, because I was uh, smashing a couple other cars and my windshield got all cracked up. So there's Real Racing 3 on the HTC One. Real Racing 3 did get it kind of toasty by the time we got to our third race. Mostly I could feel the heat actually along in the sides over here. Usually you would expect it to be on the back, but it got pretty warm right here. So if, you're, if your HTC One gets kind of hot when you play demanding games, don't be worried. That's just what it does. So that's the HTC One. All in all, a gorgeous phone. Certainly lovely looking piece of hardware for your $199 on contract. If you want something that looks the part, that would be this. Very fast, right now the fastest phone on the market. Again, when the Samsung Galaxy S4 comes out, it's going to give it a run for its money. You're probably going to see about equal performance. It's going to be about the features that you like better, whether you like Sense or whether you like TouchWiz. All in all, though, HTC has done an awesome job with Sense 5. Not intrusive, generally speaking, quite helpful. Nice looking phone, fast performing phone, doesn't bog down. Good call quality, not the best we've heard, but certainly passable. Excellent data speeds. Fantastic boom sound audio here through the built-in speakers also good audio through the headphone jack and that ultra pixel camera i'm sold on it really lovely shots with plenty of color i think most people are going to be pretty happy with that especially with the low light indoor performance and HTC Super LCD 3 display, really one of the best on the market. It's not just about the pixel density. The blacks are so deep and rich. The contrast is high. The colors are saturated, yet natural looking. Viewing angles are wonderful. Again, from the side, it looks kind of like a painted on display. It, it's just, it's great stuff. So the HTC One is certainly one of the most stunning looking phones on the market. Beautiful aluminum unibody design. Amazing display on this phone. A lot to like. Definitely one of the flagships of 2013. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.